Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, the last disease which we will discuss here that is ringworm. So ringworm, the causal pathogen is a fungi. So actually there are many different types of fungi which can cause ringworm like Microsporum, Trichophyton, Epidermophyton. So these are some of the uh, classes of fungi which cause ringworm. How do they enter inside the body? They enter through contaminated soil or objects. So if somebody is already suffering from ringworm, so a normal person should not use or share their utensils or hanky or clothes or towel. In fact, it gets spread through comb as well because ringworm happens very commonly on the scalp of the head. So it, it is very common to happen on the scalp. So now if you have this infection on your scalp and if the same uh, comb is being used by somebody else, so there are quite good chances that the fungi might get spread to different persons. Now some of the symptoms and treatment of ringworm so in symptoms would be dry scaly skin now especially there are specific areas which are more prone to ringworm or which are more prone to this type of infection one is the area around the chin so you will often see it becomes dry and scaly as if your skin is coming out of the surface of the body so that that's how it appears it also gives you intense itching you feel like itching it all the time but the more you itch the worse it becomes red patches on skin scaly scalp so on the scalp scalp is a very um, i mean it is it is very much prone to these kind of infections so one has to take proper care of their comb and uh, the so that you regularly wash your hair clean your hair shampoo your hair so all these things are required Treatment treated with antifungal medications. So these type of medications can either be applied, I mean it can be applied on the area of um, infection. If it is on the scalp then one has to cut their hair really short and then apply the cream over there. So these are some of the ways by which this can be treated. Now we have discussed about quite a few infectious diseases. We saw the pathogen which caused them, how they are transmitted, what are the symptoms and how are they treated. But with all of them, we observed that all these diseases are acquired due to some or the other reason. Now they are not present in a person by birth or it is not genetic that it is by default inside their body and they can't do anything about it. These are all acquired so they can all be prevented. So what are some of the things which in common can be done in order to prevent the spread of infectious diseases? So one is personal cleanliness, as I said. So one should maintain their personal hygiene. They should take baths regularly. They should clean each and every part of their body really well. They should wash their clothes before they wear it. So all these small, small things should be taken care of. They should not share towels or comb or handkerchiefs or clothes with anybody else. Clean drinking water needs to be maintained. Like in many areas like slums and swampy areas, it has been seen that the drinking water and the uh, excreta, they are not far away from each other. So in those cases, it is very much possible that the drinking water might get polluted or the drinking water might get contaminated. So clean, drinking water has to be clean. Wash vegetables and fruits before consumption because they might have worms or insects proper disposal of excreta. So this is extremely important. In many slums, it is still observed that people do not use proper toilets where they can uh, where they can actually uh, keep things segregated. In fact, there are many people who just use an open area or a field for that purpose, which is extremely not good, which is extremely uh, harmful for them for them only because the excreta contains a lot of pathogens which can cause diseases and if it is done in an open place then there are chances that flies and other insects can actually act as transmitting agents in, in transmitting those pathogens from one person to another avoid stagnation of water because wherever you have stagnant water there are chances that bacteria might grow there there are chances that mosquitoes will breed there and mosquitoes are also extremely harmful because they can cause several diseases like malaria chikungunya dengue so these are all harmful diseases 
use mosquito repellents as a prevention to uh, keep yourself safe from mosquitoes spraying insecticides in drainage areas now in drainage areas it is possible that insects might breed so for that purpose insecticides need to be sprayed in a regular manner so that you can get rid of any any disadvantageous things so so what are the things that we should protect ourselves from one is the pathogens that is the microorganisms so for that purpose we need to maintain cleanliness in all aspects of our life the second is the transmitting agents like the mosquitoes house flies so all these things you have to protect yourself from the third thing is proper disposal of excreta and waste materials from your body from your um, house for example you have so many uh, why do you keep dustbins in your house so that you can keep all the waste materials of your house in one separate place so that it doesn't get mixed up with other things in the house and make them untidy so in a very similar way in a locality as well you should uh, make proper segregation of wastes so that you are able to control the spread of infectious diseases so these are some of the ways by which the spread of infectious diseases can be prevented thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test thank you once again